Erzot's Love, Prologue, The Offer. Nicholas allowed the door to slam behind him as he entered his room, the rucksack hanging off his shoulder being unslung, rather forcefully onto the floor beside his bed. The contours of the bed welcomed him, the sheets doing their job perfectly, hugging him tightly as he sank into the mattress. His hands were quick to find their place on his face, covering his eyes and only granting the barest traces of light through his fingers. He would be ashamed to admit, even to himself, that he would feel the wet touch of tears on his skin. Crying was something reserved for things like loved ones passing away or finding love unrequited, not failing to get a job, but this? This was nothing. Zip. Zilch. So infinitesimally small in insignificance in the grand scheme of things that he shouldn't even have spared it any thought. People were turned down all the time. It was something that he just should have expected. He should have just known the second that he walked into the office that he wasn't going to get the job. Why pick the weird, dark-skinned creature when one could pick from a pool of young, talented, pony candidates? He should have just known. Why? Because this wasn't the first time that this has happened. This was, in fact, only the most recent failure in a long line of failures to find a job. While the reasonings of why they wouldn't hire him were always slightly varied, the gist was always the same. We want normal employees, who aren't going to scare fellow employees or drive away customers. Every time, he had gone in with the highest of hopes, and every time, those hopes had been shattered. So much so, that he now found himself crying on his borrowed bed, in his borrowed room, like a baby. Whatever happened to helping yourself so others don't have to? He thought, with a self-deprecating frown on his face. <sighs> Get up, you lazy bastard, we have to keep looking! Why? Because if he didn't, he would become a freeloader. Just like his father. To the tune of that, he only had two words in response. Screw that. With that invigorating thought to spur him, he dropped his hands from his face and sat up on the bed. He just had to keep looking. That was the key. Massaging his temples with a heavy sigh, he lifted himself from the bed, making sure to straighten out the many creases and shift the slightly tilted lamp on his nightstand back to its correct orientation. He knew exactly where the problem lay. He didn't want to stock shelves or push carts or pick apples. He wanted something better. Something more. His father had just called it an ambition, but he sought for what it really was. Pickiness. A way in which a part of his father has expressed itself within him. Something that he would firmly deny, but deep down, knew it was true. Shaking his head, a hand did a once-over on his face to confirm that there was no remaining moisture on his face. Once its scan was done and all the tears were rounded up and deposited unkindly onto the floor, he did his best to smile and walked out of his room, into the library proper. The crisp scent of fresh paper hit him, making his body relax slightly. He always did like the smell of books. He stuck his hands in his pockets and strolled down the stairs, in search of his purple, nerdy unicorn friend and housemate. He found her lounging on the couch, her hooves tucked neatly under her as she read a scroll which was being levitated only inches from her face. Her ears twitched slightly, but never turned his way. It was the perfect opportunity. Creeping up behind her, he brought his mouth right up next to her ear. Hey, Twilight. And that was all it took to make her leap, sending her tumbling off the couch, the scroll lazily floating downwards, coming to a rest on her head. Several moments of silence passed before she finally got back onto her hooves, shaking the scroll off of her head. She then fixed him with a vicious pout and attacked his ears with adorable lines. Uh, Nikki, why do you always do that? Aw, it's because you always have the best reactions. He chuckled, picking up the scroll and opening it wide, eye scanning it thoroughly. T price of sores, two dozen tons of tea are purchased by the crown. <laughs> I didn't know you followed the newspaper, Twilight. She huffed, wrenching the scroll from his grasp with the flare of her horn. I don't follow the newspaper, I just like to stay informed. He raised his hands up defensively with a teasing grin. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with keeping up on current events. Moving around the side of the couch, he crashed onto it where he patted the space next to him, signaling for Twilight to sit next to him. Hesitantly, she crawled up onto the couch, placing the back of her head against his outstretched arm. Unconsciously, he played with her ears as she kept on reading her newspaper. Then, his mind wandered to his previous breakdown. He felt his cheeks flush slightly at the memory. He really needed to get himself sorted out. He couldn't, wouldn't, be caught in one of his funks by anyone. 
His pride wouldn't allow it. But that still led him having to tell Twilight that he had failed yet again to acquire a job that paid more than a minimum wage and that it was back to stocking shelves with him. Not that she would get mad at him, she never had before, but he still felt like he was letting her down in some fashion. She covered practically all of his living expenses besides food, which even still she insisted on paying for at times. Truly, she was a saint, and too kind for her own good. Nicholas felt her head twist under his grasp, and suddenly he was looking into her eyes, the look on her face being one of remembrance. Oh, I totally forgot to ask you. She gasped in embarrassment. So, how'd your interview go? Pausing, her gaze dropped when she saw the look in his eyes. No luck, huh? <sighs> Not this time. He said, shaking his head. Guess being a chef isn't on my star chart. I don't know, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll go poke around the marketplace, uh, see what I can find. Twilight remained silent for a moment, before letting out a breath, gazing up into his eyes. Would it make you mad if I told you I'm glad that you didn't get the job? Her cheeks lit up from within, coating her lavender fur with a nice shade of violet. Ahem. <clears throat> he cleared his throat and retracted his arm to scratch behind his neck. Well, it doesn't make me feel like sunshine and rainbows, if that's what you're asking. So, do you mind if I ask you why? She sheepishly pawed at the couch with a hoof. Well, I saw how little success that you were having in finding a job that you enjoyed, and I noticed how unhappy I was making you. So, I might have asked Princess Celestia if there was an open position at the castle? He felt his breath hitch for a second. A job working in the Canterlot Castle, where the Princess Celestia resided. That sounded great, actually. He then turned to her. And what did she say? He asked with bated breath. Maybe he would score in as the royal chef or the court jester or something along those lines. Or at least that is what he hoped for, however unlikely that was to occur. She said that you'd be working as her royal advisor, following her around to meetings and standing with her during court and helping make her decisions towards the betterment of the country. Twilight said. And in case you have any doubts about anything, she noted that all costs of living would be covered under the crown budget. Nicholas took a moment to ponder before responding with a smile, pulling Twilight into a hug. Where do I sign up? Immediately, I can tell that this story has great potential from the adorable start, absolutely fantastic hook, and it sets up plans that are going to be super enjoyable for anyone to read. It truly is a thing of beauty. Now, let's get on to our remarkable donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coldhard, J Tin Man, and Darkseid, Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Rune Scythe 9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Cerberus, Starlet Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David e. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal K Anderson, TV Killer, and John Becker. Thank you all so much for watching this video, live life to the fullest, and take any good job opportunities while you can, because they might not pop up in the future.